Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I'm going to cover LTI systems, impulse response, and convolution. In the last session, I talked about linear and time invariant systems. Now, if a system is linear and time invariant, it's called LTI, which obviously stands for linear time invariant. LTI systems are extensively used in signal processing. In fact, I can easily say they form the foundation of signal processing. That's why it's very important to fully understand what LTI means. To clarify that, I'm going to show you two simple examples. First example, by applying this input to an LTI system, we get Y1T at the output. Now, the question is, if we apply this input to the same system, what is the output in terms of Y1T? We know the system is LTI. If you carefully look at X2T, you can easily see x2t is basically x1t plus x1t plus 1. Let me show you why. This is x1t which is given. This is x1t signal which is shifted by one unit to the left. So here is the shifted signal. 0 goes to minus 1 and 2 goes to 1. The amplitude does not change. This is x1t and this is x1t plus 1. Now let's add them together. 0 plus 0, we get 0 here. 0 plus 1, we get 1 in this range. 1 plus 1, we get 2 here. 1 plus 0, we get 1 in this range. Finally, 0 plus 0, we get 0. So we can express x2t signal in this form. We know if x1t goes through the LTI system, the output is y1t. This is given. Okay, we also know the system is time invariant. A quick reminder from the previous tutorial. A system is time invariant if a time shift in the input results in the same time shift in the output. The system is time invariant here. So if we shift the input by one unit, the output gets shifted by one unit. Also, we know the system is linear. As I explained in the last tutorial, for a linear system, a linear combination of inputs results in a linear combination of outputs. So if this goes through the LTI system, the output is this. This is basically X2T and this is Y2T in terms of Y1T. The concept of LTI system is super important and I want you to fully understand it. So let me solve one more example. By applying X1T with this shape to an LTI system, we get y1t as the output. Now the question is, if we apply x2t with this shape, what is the output in terms of y1t? Again, look at x2t carefully. We can easily break x2t into three pieces. The first piece is here, which is basically x1t. Here is the second piece, which is x1 shifted by one unit to the left. Here is the last piece, which is x1t shifted by one unit to the right, and the amplitude is scaled by minus one. So here's what we get. Now we know if x1t goes through the system, the output is y1t. This is given. The system is time invariant, so if we shift the input by one unit to the left, the output gets shifted by the same amount. Again, since it's time invariant, if you shift the input by one unit to the right, the same time shift will happen at the output. Also, we know the system is linear. Therefore, if you multiply the input by minus 1, the output gets multiplied by minus 1 too. Also, because the system is linear, a linear combination of inputs results in a linear combination of outputs. This is basically x2t and this is y2t in terms of y1t. Next topic that I want to cover in this tutorial is impulse response. Just to refresh your mind, a unit impulse function is 1 at the origin and 0 everywhere. Now, if you apply this signal to a system, the output is called impulse response, which is commonly shown by h of t. So the impulse response, as the name shows, is the response to the impulse function. If the system is LTI, ht or impulse response can fully identify the system. This is super important, so let me repeat it again. For an LTI system, HD can fully identify the system. What does this mean? 
Let's say we have a black box system, which means we don't know what is inside the box, but we have access to the input and output. If this system is LTI, to fully understand how this system behaves, all you need to do is to apply the impulse function to the input. The impulse response that you get at the output can fully identify the system. Now, let me explain why impulse response can tell us everything about the system. If you look at delta t in the time domain, it's only non-zero at the origin. But if you look at it in the frequency domain, it's one everywhere. Don't worry about the frequency domain representation. I will make frequency domain crystal clear for you in the future. But for now, just accept this. Now, if you apply this signal to an LTI system, you are basically stimulating all the frequencies of the system. That's why the response you get is the richest response ever. If you don't understand what I just said, don't worry about it. Let me explain it in a simple way. I'm not sure if you use this trick when you want to buy watermelon. Basically, the question is if the watermelon is ripe enough or not. We are in the grocery store and we cannot cut it there to see what is inside. So we can consider this watermelon as a black box system. This is green, but you know what I'm saying. By slapping the watermelon, you basically apply the impulse function to this system. This is impulse because it's just one moment, short and quick. Now based on the vibration you get from the system, you can fully identify the watermelon. So by applying impulse function, you get the impulse response or vibration from the watermelon, which is the richest response from this system. Okay, let's continue. To find HD, all you need to do is to apply delta function to the system, or basically you need to replace input by delta function. First example, this system is given and the question is what is the impulse response? This is our input. To find the impulse response, we just need to replace the input by delta function. So here is our impulse response. Next example, yt is equal to the integral from t minus 2 to t x tau d tau. This is our input. To find the impulse response, we need to replace it by delta function. This function is only non zero at the origin. The integral is a window from t minus 2 to t. We need to define some scenarios for this window. When t is less than zero, delta function is zero inside the window. The integral basically means summation, so by adding bunch of zeros, we get zero. Let's consider another scenario, when t minus 2 is less than 0, and t is greater than 0. Here is our window. t minus 2 is less than 0, which means t is less than 2, and at the same time t is greater than 0, i.e. t is between 0 and 2. In this window, delta function is 0 everywhere except at the origin, which is 1. So if we add bunch of zeros with 1, we get 1. Finally, let's say t minus 2 is greater than 0. Here is the window. This means t is greater than 2. The delta function is always 0 inside the window, and the summation is 0. Here is our impulse response. Let's plot it. For t less than 0, it's 0. Between 0 and 2, it's 1. For t greater than 2, it's 0. This is ht, which you can easily write as u of t, unit step function, minus u of t minus 2. Done. Next example. yt is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity x of tau plus 4 multiplied by e to the power of t plus tau multiplied by u of t plus tau d tau. Again, the question is, what is ht? Here is the input. To find impulse response, we need to replace input by delta function. Here is what we get. This is an impulse function which is shifted by 4 units to the left. So it's only non-zero at minus 4. So the multiplication by this function is only non-zero at tau equal to minus 4. Based on equivalence property which I covered in elementary signals lecture, h becomes this. Please note the integral variable is tau, therefore t has nothing to do with this integral. So you can treat this part as a constant and pull it out. ht can be written like this. Again, this function is non-zero only at minus 4. Integral means summation. We are adding lots of zeros with 1, 
with lots of other zeros, so we get 1. Therefore, the impulse response is this function. The last topic I want to cover in this tutorial is convolution. As you may know, this word in English means complicated details of something which makes it difficult to understand. Unfortunately, this topic in signal processing is confusing and scary for many students. But if you truly grasp what convolution means, you will get it like a piece of cake. Let's understand it together. As I already explained, by applying delta function to a system, we will get the impulse response. Now, let's assume the system is LTI. As the system is time invariant, by shifting the input by an arbitrary value, let's say tau, the output gets shifted by the same value. In fact, tau unit shift in the input results in tau unit shift in the output. Now, the system is linear, so if we multiply the input by an arbitrary value, let's say x of tau, the output is multiplied by the same value. Again, multiplying the input by x tau results in the same multiplication at the output. The system is linear, so a linear combination of inputs results in a linear combination of outputs. Please note, integral basically means summation or linear combination. Look at this one carefully. Based on sifting property, this is xt. Let me explain sifting property one more time because it's important. Let's assume our x function is like this. This impulse signal is only non-zero at t. Please note the integral variable is tau. This is x tau and this is delta t minus tau. Let's look at the product of these signals. Zero in this range is multiplied by x and zero in this range is multiplied by x. So the product is zero everywhere except at this point. At this point, the impulse function is 1, and the other function is xt. To find the integral, we need to add the product everywhere, 0 plus xt plus 0, so we get x of t. That was the proof of sifting property again. Let's go back to convolution. By applying xt to the LTI system, the output is this integral which is commonly referred to as convolution and shown by the star sign. Think about it, what does this mean? When the impulse response or HT for an LTI system is given, you can basically find the output to any input by finding this integral. That's the beauty of convolution. Please note the system must be LTI, that's the key. If it's not time invariant, this time shift step is not true. If it's not linear, these two steps are not valid, so the system must be LTI. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. In the next video, I will solve lots of examples of convolution and you will see how easy this topic is. Thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next video.